In this video, we are going to try completing the remaining functionality needed to display the total coins and the longest distance covered. So the first thing that we are going to do is rename longest distance covered to high score. And the reason we are doing that is because I felt like the longest distance covered is a bit too long and confusing. And the name high score just felt simple, short and most importantly, it is a familiar name to most players. There is also no difference in functionality between the name high score and the name longest distance covered. Hence, there is no reason to use a different and more confusing name when you could choose a more simple and familiar name that players are already used to. These kinds of changes are very common during the development of a prototype and it's always important to choose names or UI placements that are commonly used among other similar games. Because players that play your game most likely already played other games that are similar to yours. Also, games that use unnecessarily complicated names for certain common functionalities can make it difficult for the player to understand and play the game properly and could also frustrate the player in the process. And this could eventually lead to the player quitting the game. With that, we are going to open the content browser and open BP third person game mode over here. And in here, I'm going to change the name. So I'm going to call this calculate score. So I'm going to rename these distance centimeter and distance meter to four score and score. So I'm just going to go over here, distance centimeter, right click and select rename. And I'm going to call this four score. You can choose whatever name that you feel is more appropriate for this. But I'm going to choose four score. And for distance meter, I'm going to rename it as score. And then we have this long distance over here. I'm going to rename that in the save G distance and coins. So right click and rename it as high score. So compile and save. Close it. Just compile this one as well. So again, we're going to rename this one as save G high score and coins. And I think we're going to have some issues over here. I way to compile this. Yeah, the name over here have not changed. I'm just going to check this later on. So for now, I'm going to leave this as it is over here. Even though the names are different, I'm going to fix the names in the other blueprint and then come back over here. I'm just going to go to the game over blueprint widget and then open the game UI blueprint widget as well. And in the game over blueprint widget, I'm going to rename this one as high score. And leave total coins as it is. Go to the graph view. And in here, select longest distance. And select rename. And call it as high score. Compile and save. And similarly, in the game UI, I'm going to select the distance, rename this one as score and again call this score and here yeah, we can leave these names as it is, compile and save. Now the names actually changed. Now we're going to go and replace name of this save G distance and coins reference as save G high score and coins. Compile and save. So now we have an issue over here. We had just changed the name of this blueprint class over here that was previously save G distance and coins to save G high score and coins. And this name change has caused an issue where the slot name which was previously saved with the save G distance and coins and this slot name has not updated. To the new save G high score and coins and hence it wouldn't execute anyway beyond this cast over here because this cast will keep on failing. 
So to fix this issue, I'm going to delete the current game in the slot. And we're going to do that by adding a reset option in the game over blueprint widget. This reset option is meant to be used during the development of the game. So we can easily delete the total number of coins and the high score of the player for debugging and testing purposes. So to do that, I'm going to go to the game over blueprint widget. Make sure to set the visibility of this border widget to false. Add the button. Set the anchor. Press Ctrl and Shift and put it at the bottom. And then you could just drag this higher. We're also going to add a text to this button. I'm going to rename the button as reset button and rename the text as reset. Then go to the graph view, then event graph. And in here, I'm going to click on the reset button and click on the on clicked button event over here. And then what we are going to do is I'm going to get the game mode. So type get game mode, drag the pin and type cast to third person game mode. Connect the execution pin and after that drag the execution pin and search for delete game in slot. Drag the SBP third person game mode and then search for slot name and select get slot name. So we're going to get the slot name in the third person game mode and just delete it when we press the reset button. So again, go back over here, like reset over here and re-enable the border. So compile this. So if I were to go over here, I'm just going to drag the execution pin over here, like print string and then connect this over here. Increase the duration to 10 seconds. I'm just going to right click over here and then search for append. Select the string append, type it on B, and then I'm going to type slot name hyphen and also make sure to connect the execution back over here. So, yeah, what this does is that it's going to check if the game in the slot is present. Then it will run this execution pin and it will read that value that is stored in this slot. And if else, we're going to create another print. Select a red color, increase the duration to, to 10 seconds, and type no slot game, create a new one. So, what this basically means is that when we have resetted the slot name, we are saving a new game to the slot. So if I were to run this and I, you can see right now we have a game in the slot. If I were to click on reset and click on retry and try dying again, you can see now we get a red string, which means we are creating a new one and the previous one was deleted. So yeah, this means that the resetting functionality now works. Well, again, it's not really exactly resetting it. It's deleting the game from the slot, but it still functionally achieves the same thing. Again, removing all the string that we have connected over here before. And now we need to actually display the high score and the coins in the game over blueprint widget. So to display total coins on high score, I'm going to go to the graph view, go to total coins over here. I'm going to right click over here and search for get game mode. And then I'm going to drag the return value and then cast to the BP third person game mode. Connect the execution pins. And then drag the SVP third person game mode and search for slot. So we're going to get the slot name and drag the slot name and search for load game from slot. Once again, connect the execution pin from the cast 
and after that i'm going to drag the execution pin and search for cast to save g high scoring coins connect the return value and then we can drag the as save g high scoring coins and search for total coins so we're going to get the total coins and add it to the return value and then again connect the execution pin all right so for the high score we're also mostly going to do the same thing so just copy this whole section over here by pressing ctrl plus c and then drag the return node away and paste all the nodes over here connect the execution pin and again drag the return node away and drag the sag high score and coins and type get total coins connect total coins to the return value and connect the execution pin as well and make sure to delete this node and search for get high score instead connect this value over here compile and then we are going to try running this and again if i were to reset it and then retry and you can see everything is now correctly working you can see the values over here updates accordingly so yeah that's about it for this video thanks for watching and see you later bye